Coming in at number four, the number one wide receiver in the class, DeCorian Moore from Texas, but committed to LSU. I call him six points off the bus. He is lightning in a bottle. Average over 20 yards per catch as a junior for a Duncanville program that won a state title. We got to see him at the Battle Miami tournament. He was the alpha dog. No one could cover him. I think what also stands out, and Hudson Standish on our scouting team has brought this up, he's one of the few guys at Duncanville that has actually played on both sides of the ball. They throw him in there at corner. He is wired the right way. He's a competitive kid. He wants to win, and another guy Opened up his track season really well here. Went 10-6 in the 100-meter dash, 23-foot broad jump. He's electric. Corian Moore will be at LSU this weekend recruiting alongside Bryce Underwood, Harlan Berry, and the other LSU commits. Um, he's going to have his recruiting hat on, but I'm not completely ruling out a flip down the road. I'm, I'm watching two teams, Texas and Ohio State. He's got a great relationship with the Texas staff, and if Ohio State can get him on campus, especially late in the process at some point, that visit to Columbus could be massive. At number one, the top player in the class out of Michigan, quarterback Bryce Underwood. He is committed to the LSU Tigers. He's the guy in 2025. 40 and two as a starter, 120 touchdown passes in three seasons. He's ran for 20 more. I think what really stands out about Underwood is the blend of his arm talent, his size, and his athleticism. Uh, he has continued to improve year over year mechanically since he first emerged on the scene. Emily, I've been searching and searching for a player comparison. And I think I found the one that I like for Bryce Underwood. And I'd say Deshaun Watson. I went back and watched Deshaun, Deshaun Watson's tape from when he was in high school. I think there's some similarities there for the top ranked prospect. You never know where things are going to go from here. But at this point, in talking to people close to Underwood and talking to him in Vegas, it seems like he's locked in with LSU. He's going to be back on campus this weekend recruiting and doing all he can to build something special in Baton Rouge. Um, some top, top priorities. You got wide receivers Caleb Cunningham and Jamie French. Cornerback DJ Pickett, linebacker Jonah Williams, Tavian Wallace, another linebacker, and then lastly, edge Chad Wolferk. All are going to be at LSU this weekend. Underwood's going to do everything he can over the next couple months, going to be there often. So it seems like he's locked in ahead of enrolling early in January. So there you have it, the top 16 players in the nation. You're looking at 16 through 9 right now. A lot of talent on the board, uncommitted. Some of these things are TBD, but one thing that does not need to be determined is whether or not Bryce Underwood and Corian Moore are good at the respective positions that they play. And LSU has both of them, the number one quarterback and the number one wide receiver. Coop, how does this duo project to the next level? Well, I'll, I'll give you two guys. I'll give you Jaden Daniels and I'll give you Malik Neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. And Jaden Daniels and Bryce Underwood, they're different players. And, I, and I'll go by and say this. Bryce Underwood is a passer first who is very athletic in the pocket and is very good at extending plays. I think that's what he does well. I love his playmaking ability on the perimeter. This guy, DeCorian Moore, uh, is one of the most explosive dynamic players uh, coming out in the 2025 cycle. The thing about him, he's very different from a body type standpoint, but watching his tape when it comes to balance, body control, his ability to contort his body in midair and make contested catches reminds me a lot of Jamar Chase. And then you dig into the background as well, uh, his ability as a leaper in the triple jump. He recorded a 10-6-5 in the 100, and then you turn on the tape. Uh, it matches all those verified times, all those verified field events as well. So we talk about box checkers all the time, and I think some people might be a little hesitant. Hey, you got a five, ten and a half receiver in the top five of your rankings. What's that about? Well, we feel really good about what this guy's going to be. And when you think about Jaden Daniels and you think about Malik Neighbors, the quarterback conversation kind of sorts out itself. But how about Malik Neighbors, uh, one of the most dynamic receivers in LSU program history? That's saying a lot. Two other guys that play there, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. So you think about those two pairing up, what that uh, relationship could look like at the next level. And obviously LSU had one of the most prolific offenses in all of college football. Joe Sloan still there taking over the controls along with Cortez Hankton. If I'm an LSU fan and you, know, you go back to what Tom said, it's all about keeping those two together because those are two guys that can have a huge impact on your program going forward.
Oh, man, Coop stole my answer. I'll say this about DeCorian Moore, and I think I've said it on this airways before. He's like the best seven-on-seven slot receiver, so smaller inside guy that I've seen since Jalen Waddell years ago running around the fields at IMG Academy. Look, you, you want to talk about those two, uh, DeCorian Moore, Bryce Underwood. I think we need to also have Harlem Barry, our number two ranked running back in this conversation. He is arguably the fastest player in the class. If you want to talk about the lasers and the 40-yard dash, I don't know. I, you know, what are they going to be? I said LSU's offense in 2019. Remember how magical it was with Joe Burrow and how many points they put up? And obviously they did the same in 2023. They lit up scoreboards. To me, these three guys are going to continue to allow Brian Kelly and the Tigers to score a bunch of points. Now, what's going to happen on the defensive side of the ball? I don't know. I believe a new defensive coordinator, Blake Baker, friend of the Oyster Boys. But LSU is going to continue to run it up as long as they can keep these guys committed. All right. As LSU fans pick up their jaws that have dropped on the floor with all of those comparisons, I mean, man, that's a lot of talent.